You know how it is, what we want, fake and another. Chas and Dave, two contemporary Cockney musicians who regularly entertain in traditional style and setting. They write all their own material, but freely acknowledge a debt to the music hall that once voiced and fostered the Cockney dialect. And I can remember a case where I was miles up in the desert, all getting up the other side of the brook somewhere. And there was a young, I'd been out there for years then, and there was a young lad, you know, and I heard him speaking, so I said, where do you come from? So he said, London. I said, I know you do. I said, but whereabouts in London? He said, Bethnal Green. I said, I knew that. I mean, Bethnal Green was with the F. I mean, you take it which way, either one F or two F. So you take it which way you like, you know what I mean? And that's how it was you years ago. Today, they're much more modern than I am. They say Bethnal Green. I've got grandchildren today, I'm afraid to talk to them because they're so posh here. They, Hello, grandfather. How are you? So I say, well, old pal, how are you getting on, girl? All right. And this is it today, isn't it, really? It's everyday talk now. It isn't be sort of... Um, we used to say apples and stairs and things, apples and pears and things like that. They don't use it. It's everyday things, little little catchphrases at the end of sentences and things like that. I mean, they use the word, you see, or all right, on the end of every sentence, it's all right, or you see, you know, always on, stuck on the end of a That's thing. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and if they want to talk to you, you know, they say, uh, hang on a minute. You know, it's all little catchphrases now, instead of saying apples and stairs and apples and pears, all things like that, you know, it's died out now. Right. So you take your overcoat off and you put it up on the rack in a pub and you say, look after my smother for me, Fred, well, it's your overcoat, you know what I mean? Or you might have your twirls in your pocket. What's that? Bunch of kids. <laughs> <laughs> and amongst the screws, when they go out and say, Where's me glim? Where's me glim? Well, that's his torch. Yeah. You still use those? Not so very often these days. They're all that's inside well, doing yeah. bird now, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I turn around to Ronnie, I say, I've got to hold this, I get something quite saying, I want to knock this out a bit sharp. You know what I mean? That's a slight weather to turn around and say, What, you had it off? Yeah. I think you've had something See, off the back of the lorry. I mean, we even talk, we talk like that now. I mean, all the time in the pub, like, they're coming and say, I want to knock this out a bit. Like, you know, nobody wants to buy it, you know. And uh, all things like that, I mean, we know. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we're all straight here. We're all, we're all crooks here. <laughs> East End Cockney is still, above all, language used in the streets. Here, catchphrases are swapped and slang evolves with a constant invention. Inspiration coming from every walk of life and all forms of popular culture. My East End job, and I was born with it. My thieves job, and I picked up basically once I joined the police force. You could walk into a place, to a pub one night, see someone, say to him, um, sing Charlie about. They say, uh, no, Governor, a bit of aggravation. And you say, oh, yeah, well, uh, what happened then? He said, oh, he was at the Whisper down the wick and he's got a carpet. Now, that is the, the sort of the phraseology that people expect us to use. What are you saying? Um, he was either at the Whisper or the Whiz. The Whisper is a, is a racing trick where you go around whispering to people. There's six horses in the race, and you whisper, number four, number four, don't forget, and number two, and you tip every, every dog in the race to six different people. One of them must be the winner. And then when you go back afterwards, you find the one who you tip the winner to, and you go back, you must say, well, uh, what about me drink then, you know? And you're on an earner every race, you must be. It's one of those things. Well, if he was at the whisper, or at the whiz, dipping the pockets down the wick, which is Hackney Wick, He's got, um, he's, he's got himself a carpet, which means he got arrested, as they say, nicked official, and he got three months. In the East End of London, the establishment speaks the same language as the underworld. To the uninitiated, it's understandably confusing, but the Sweeney and the tea leaf meet on common ground. I wanted to put this man on identification parade, and I went down to his house, and I found him, and he knew me, he was no... I didn't have to go in and tell him, announce myself to who I was. He knew exactly who I was and he knew exactly why I was there. But um, he came out with the usual protest, you know, uh, nothing to do with me, what's it all about, Governor, the usual bits and pieces. And I said to him, well, such and such a job, you know, as far as I'm aware, down to you. He said, oh, yeah, marvellous, isn't it? He said, I suppose someone's been on a trumpet, now I'm a dot on a card. Which, to me, I knew what he was talking about. Was when he said someone's been on the trumpet, it meant someone had informed on him. Someone had phoned me up, told me who he was, and he said, now he was a dot on the card, which is a racing balance. You know, this phraseology gets card marked. You know, well, that comes from the racing, you know. 
put a cross down beside the ones. Well, a dot on the card meant he was first favourite for the job. And uh, I knew exactly what he meant. As far, if he, he was saying to me that someone's giving you information that I had done it, and you having got that information, I'm a certainly to go down for this one. Strange enough, he pleaded guilty, eventually. But uh, I knew what he was talking about. Every trade has its jargon. With such a large proportion of the East End once employed in the docks and dockland, it's hardly surprising that a specific Cockney working slang has grown up here too. Well, in my trade, uh, or in my industry, the ports industry, it's, well, it, it, the terminology there at times, you, it's very difficult to un understand you that a work industry a long, long time. For instance, the common usage of a word in dockland, and I would, I would like to gamble that is only about 1% of the port workers in London who know its origin, and yet everybody uses it. And it's the word green acre. Is that when you made a set, of, if you make a set of cargo, either for import, for export or import, bringing it in, and it spilled, it meant that you'd had a green acre. It, you green acred it. And I used to think there's something to do with upturned soil until I started to do a bit of digging, and I only learned five years ago the origin of it. And the origin comes from a stevedore whose name was Greenacre. This is the alleged origin. And he had committed, he, he killed his wife because she, uh, her infidelity was somebody else. And he killed his wife and he dismembered her body. And they found pieces of the body across the east end of London. And so you can imagine some wag the very next morning after reading about it, and as the set spilled, said, oh, he's had a Greenacre. And from that day onward to this very day, that word is common usage in Dockland. If they spill a set of cargo, it's a green acre. Jack Dash has watched the East End changing face over the years. But though the rows of back-to-back -back houses have now given way to huge new concrete blocks, he sees no demolition squad at work in either the speech or the spirit of the Cockney. You know, when people say, oh, the East End's losing its character, I think they're talking a lot of nonsense because Buildings don't make people's character. Because if buildings made people's character, then the cockneys of the past generation would be so deformed and twisted and so ugly, but they weren't. Character formed in industry. And that's why uh, we are today, and it would never be lost. But of course, the, um, and when you, you see the kids coming out from school, you listen to them, the cockney is there, the, the dropping of the H's and the and the T's and the rolling of words into one, perhaps not so pronounced as me, but it's still there. You could be a Cockney in certain ways, but not in others. I mean, you could, could be a Cockney in general, but in the, in the whole district, you can't be a Cockney if you're foreign and come back into an area like this. I mean, you can only consider yourself as a half a Cockney, not truly as a Cockney, as an idiot. Well, are you a Cockney? Yeah, I believe I am, yeah. Like, because I've grown up in the area and everyone I speak to is Cockney, like, so I believe he's always a Cockney. It's one of them. Like, what is he? Well, to me, he's a Cockney, but to himself, he might not be a Cockney. Do you think you're a Cockney? No. Why not? Because I can't get the right sound, you know? So... What language do you speak with your family? Bengali. What about your family? What language do they speak? Uh, Greek. What do you speak with them? Greek, always. So what do they think of you speaking Cockney the way you are now to me? Well, they can't understand because my mum can't understand English. She can just about go f walk through the market, you know. She can just about get through the market speaking English. So it's very really all. Do you act as interpreter for her? Uh, yeah. If I want to relax when I talk to a person, I just speak Cockney because it's come natural to me because I brought up in the area. But otherwise, you're just the same as anybody else. And a matter of fact, I would rather live in this type of area than live with a posh person. Why? They're more themselves. They're more outspoken. But as a posh person, he's never... He's always something <coughs> what he isn't. He always puts it on. Always. As these new cockneys settle in to life and language, rehousing has uprooted many EastEnders from their traditional home and deposited them in the Essex commuter belt. The suburbs of Gants Hill and Chigwell are a far cry from Bethnal Green or Bow, so we spoke to two families to find out how Cockney was faring in this new environment. With Cockney, it's an accent that 
over the, you know, the years, say rich people or posh people, they tend to think it's common. It's not an accent. Now, if you come, say, from the North Country with a North Country accent, it's not a common accent, is it? But Cockney has always been thought of as common. Mm. You know, common people from the East End. Mark yeah. Spencers, they laugh at me, the managers yeah. and that, because mm. I talk mm. funny, they well, say. they told you that you'd never yeah. get anywhere, didn't they? They didn't say I won't get anywhere, they just said that they think it's funny well, the way I it's talk. It's always funny mm. to somebody who can speak properly. It's very funny, but... They uh, like it, though. They say they to me, mm. say something, and I say it, and they all oh, laugh. Oh, they love it. Think, yeah, they yeah. think it's good. They think it's, it's a good. joke. And, you know, yeah. I like it. I like them to think it's uh, funny. I don't believe that they realise that this is the way I usually talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> no, I'm saying you won't end up on the board of directors, will you? With a voice like that. No, well, yeah. none of them have got a voice like this, but... I like my Cockney. I don't mind the Cockney accent, but it doesn't, it doesn't put me out because my job doesn't interfere with it in that way. But I think if I was younger, like Susan, yeah, I think I'd too. prefer to speak a lot better. Anyway. I don't think Cockney's an handicap, but I'd like to talk better than I do. Why? Well, I, I just think Susan wants to get better, a receptionist yeah. job for a start when yeah. she leaves. Oh, a room. telephonist, and I don't yeah. think I could do very well with talking really Cockney or anything. No, she, she's been... Thinking about a career in the Wrens, and yeah. the headmaster told her you might as well forget that if she talks like that. 